2 Kings 22. Josiah was eight years old. That's young. Eight in the Bible is a new beginning, seven complete. Now, Josiah, before we read, let's look at who he is. Amon, his father, wicked king, died in conspiracy. Amon did everything that his, his father done before he repented. The grandfather of Josiah was a wicked, the most wickedest, longest reign king in Judah. And yet we read in 2 Chronicles 33, he repented and got right and God worked with him. His great grandfather, Hezekiah, just did right. Loved the Lord, took some gold <laughs> to pay for the ways, but. So when we come into Josiah, <clears throat> the big thing is today people say, well, criminals, you know, they're born into the ghettos. They're born into a, this guy is born into a kingdom. His father was against God in every way. And he turned out right. It's a heart condition. Uh, right now, I, I, I'm saved. My dad's not saved. My dad did everything under the sun against the Lord. My heart, when I truly met the Lord the first time, was witness the gospel. As far as I know, that very first time, I received Christ as my Savior. We don't look at the children, you know, here's a man in, in the ministry, and he's going to have wonderful children, Eli, Samuel, David. So Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. So by the time he's 40, no, yeah, 39, 40 is testing. And his mother's name was Judiah, the daughter of Adaliah, I hate when they move to the next line, of Boshka. Now, the reason why I would mention, we keep seeing the mothers mentioned in Judah, because they would put not as Mary as a god, but the kings would have their mother there, and it started with Solomon, with Bathsheba, because they would turn to their mother and say, Mom, you're old, respectfully. Mom, you have lived a lot of lives. You have seen a lot of things. I need counsel. I need help. I need guidance. Not like Mary, where, you know, you're the God, and you tell your son what to do. No, it was, it was God, and it was respect. It was respect. She would be there, but she, she wouldn't. I know Solomon called her the queen. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So Judah had right kings. They had wrong kings. Israel north had all wrong kings. And since Hezekiah, Israel north, Samaria, they're gone into captivity. Now, I don't know if Josiah would have seen any of that. No Manasseh did, probably Amon. That here their, their northern family are gone. And, his, uh, and he did right in sight of the Lord and walked in the way of David, his father. How would he have known how David walked? He was taught. Somebody brought him up right. Now notice his father. David's not his father. Amen is. And this is, you know, one of them things. Oh, I can't believe the Bible because it, it said father. It wasn't. No, father can be grandfather. And turn not aside to the right hand or to the left side. He walked on the straight and narrow. That says a lot from what his father did and what his grandfather did. There are no idols, no images, no gods in him, but one God. That would be Psalms 51 and 32. And he came, and it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah. So he's been on the throne for 10 years. That the king sent Shaphatham, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe. This is the guy in charge of the books. This is the guy in charge of the scrolls. This is the guy in charge. To the house of the Lord, saying. All right, now we're looking at the temple. 
Go to Hilkiah, the high priest. Now, have you noticed something what we read here, what we have it, what we read in 21 and 20 and 19? In 20, 21, we read high places, high place. With Josiah, we read high priest. Look at that. What? Um, well, and it says in the 18th year of King Hezekiah, would that be his age or how many years he's been king? How many years he's been king? All right, so then it would be 18 he's, years, he's been on the, not, not 10. He'd be on the throne 18 years. All right, so you would add the 8 to the 18, or, and that would be his age. He had to pass in the 8th. Year of because you said he was on there for 10 years. I would think that would be the reign, then it would be he would be 26. Hmm. I always read it as the age. So he calls the high priest, there's no high places. Look at that. And we kept seeing that, now. and but they worship or whatsoever they worship in the high places. Or the king worshiped in the high place. Here, the high priest. That he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord. I want to know what's I want to know what the revenue is coming into the house of the Lord. Which the keepers of the door, those are people, there's doorkeepers, that would be your ushers today, have gathered of the people. What? Yeah, all the offerings, the, the tithes, the money. So you would give the money to the man at the door instead of passing the plate. You had one king had a had a chest and he bore a hole in it. I can imagine they had little name tags, usher or security. I can't imagine that. I had to say that. I got to do kicking. Hmm. I gathered the people. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers. That's the first time that word shows up. And you read in New Testament, be ye doers of the word, doers of the work. Would that other term, they didn't say the doers? <clears throat> no. It's the first time that word shows up, doers of the work. Is that whole phrase? Yep. No, just doers. And have the oversight of the house of the Lord. That's the temple. You know, it's funny when we read, it says the house of the Lord. Very rarely does it say the temple. Again, let's look what the Bible has to say. And let's forget what we think, that how great we are. And you got churches today on this side of Calvary. And they call themselves temple, Baptist, something, temple, church. Got a problem. The Old Testament is called the house of the Lord. I have not ever seen a, let me see, Bible Baptist house. The church are the people. And don't tell me everybody that's in that assembly are all the church because the rapture happens. The church building holds the people there are going to be some people still sitting there. Didn't Jesus say that your body is your temple? Your body is a temple. You're supposed to take care of it. Inside us is housed the Holy Spirit. Inside the temple, the house of the Lord here is God. We we go even even the disciples came to Jesus. You see how goodly these stones are, Jesus. <laughs> he said they're going to be torn down by seventy A.D. House of the Lord, and let them give it to the doers of the work, which is the house of the Lord, to repair the breaches of the house. The, the house of the Lord, Josiah is coming. This place is in disrepair. So what's he saying? I want to know how much money people are giving to you guys. Yeah? Okay, I'll go fix the house of the Lord. Look at that. Look, look, that, that molding's coming down. Look, there's a crack over there. Unto carpenters and builders and masons. And again, that mason, that's not 
the secret organization, as I have been told by a dedicated into masonry man that has threatened me by things I would say and things that I knew and the books that I were reading about masons. You would open this right here, and I've done it. And he's shown me the places in the Bible. Wherever it says Mason, they will say that's them. And they pride themselves working on the temple of the Lord. And that goes with your Raiders of your Lost Ark. That would go into your national treasures. That would go in all that things, in the back of the dollar bill and all that. That's a God. To buy timber and hewed stone to repair the house. Oh, there's a timber. Not planks, timber. It's coming to decay. Let's fix the house. Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. So, okay, here's the building project. Here it's going. No one slipped their hand into the pot. No one stole. They gave to God and gave to the king and gave to the priest worthy service. And there is no word of God by what we're going to read next. The subject is the building program. Right, that's kind of interesting what's going on right now. <laughs> the house of the Lord's in disrepair. Let's fix it. Oh, can I say not say or say that you know they didn't build another one? They fixed the one they had. I, I don't know. And Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, the recorder, the high priest report, recorder, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. Should have been the scribe. I have found. Where has it been? It's been gone. And I have seen my time in the church age, in the churches I've been, I have seen the word of God in the back seat of the car. I have seen time get ready to go to church. Where's my Bible? I gotta find my Bible. Where's my Bible? I've seen people do that. I've seen even Bibles left on a pew at the church all week. It's become a placement, Lord, this is my pew. It's funny now how after all this, and you assume that there's cleaning, there's there's moving the debris, there's building, all of a sudden, boom, here comes the word of God showing up. And the high priest finds it, and he brings it to the scribe. The scribe is the one in charge of the, the, the book. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shiphan, and he read it. And Shephan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, The servants have gathered the money that was found in the house. All right, that's the decree he said. And have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work to have the oversight of the house of God. The building program's going. And Shephan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hezekiah the priest, that's the high priest, has delivered me a book, and Shephan read it before the king. How come the book wasn't mentioned first? Notice where the priorities are. The law is mentioned. Look how great things are. Oh, by the way, here's this book I found. Book of the law, it had to be in Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. We don't know what scroll. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law. The king is having the word, the law, read to him. And he rent his clothes. And the, and the king commanded Helkiah the priest, and Hyakim the son of Shephiah, and Archbar the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Ashaha the servant of the king, saying, He's getting two or three witnesses, or not more. Go ye, inquire of the Lord for me. That's kind of funny because his great grandpa Hezekiah, here he gets this letter from Assyria and says, "You know, we're going to kick your butt. We're going to destroy you. Your God ain't nobody." 
has a guy who walks in the temple and lays it out. And we don't know where he goes to the temple, but he lays it. I said, God, do you see that? Josiah doesn't go into the temple. He says, I need someone to go for the Lord for me. Go ye inquire the Lord for me. And for the people. And for all Judah. I would say for me, the king, and the, and the, the royalty. And all Judah... I mean, all the people, I would say that's for the Jewish people, and all Judah, any strangers that are in the land. Concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that's kindled against us. He didn't, he didn't get read to him a fluffy kind of, fluffy, chilly kind of, rosary kind of, you know, lily message. He got a message, he got read to him. And wrath of God, destruction, judgment. It's due according to all which is written concerning us. So that book had judgment. That book had plagues. It had reactions. And it had a way to get right with God. And people... They don't realize that mean, nasty guy, but he's also provided a way. You do not have to go to hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou, be, thou shalt be saved. Now, if you fall off into hell, that's your fault. So Hilkiah the priest, and Hyakim, and Ikebar, and Shaphan, and Asahiah, went unto Huda, what names? The prophetess. Now, why did they go to a woman? I don't know. In the book of Judges, you got such a time going on. And they came to Deborah. And I'm not going to expound anything because I don't know. Some have said, you know, there are no men to do it. The high priest. Why can't he? I don't know. The wife of Shalom. Why not Shalom? The son of Takva, the son of Haraz, keeper of the wardrobe. The only other place that word shows up in 2 Chronicles 34, 22, wardrobe. Some people have more God of their wardrobe and fashion than the God of the Bible. That's only two places in the Bible. So she's in charge, or he's in charge, of the clothes. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in college. Ooh, look at that big word there, college. It only shows up in Second Chronicles 34, 22. That's the first time wardrobe shows up and college shows up, and there's only two other places, and they're, they're the same context of what we're reading right now. We put so much on college, and it only shows up in two places in the Bible, and it has to deal with a woman prophetess. Isn't that kind of interesting? And the nations despair because they do not have God. Their temple, is, their house of God is in dis, disrepair. All of a sudden, we find the word of God. But I say now she dwelt in Jerusalem, in the so it's, and they commune with her. Sometimes it's kind of hard reading. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not enough to throw the whole Bible in the garbage. I yeah. mean, you're going to go to hell because you don't understand who. Uh, no, there are books out there I've had. I, I don't. You want you want a good Christian book that wants to give you a headache? Uh, Babylon, Mystery Babylon. That will give you a headache. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I had to do that book for my classes. I thank the Lord I found it on tape. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Can I tell you that Paul has not been born yet? Because some people will go run. A woman should not assert the authority over a man. That's the wrong time to bring this up. They went seeking Christ. And the thing is, 
We don't know what. Maybe there were no more men. Remember Deborah? That guy goes up to. Well, I won't do it unless you go to battle with me. And where's Deborah's husband? <laughs> uh, no, no, sorry, sir. My wife is not going into battle. I mean, and the Bible speaks about a time, and there's coming a time that there are going to be no men. The women and the children are going to be, and we're in that period of time now. There are things that women are doing. They're married to men, and it's like they should not be doing it. Let's say the Lord God of Israel. We know who we're talking about. Tell the man that sent you to me. Tell them. Tell, he's the king. Tell the man. You know where else that expression went? Kind about, roundabout way? Nathan went up to David and says, Thou art the man. How's that? Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring... Now God's speaking to her. Behold, I will bring evil upon this place. And it's going to happen. Before we close 2 Kings. And upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah have read, and there are places, I, I should have went and found it, but I forget, it's Leviticus or Deuteronomy, seven times more for your sins. I mean, you got like 12 verses of great, wonderful blessings, and then you got like 36, 46 verses. So that may have been what he opened up to. My fault for not going there and reading. Because they have forsaken me. Well, we, got a, we finally got a right king. What about Ammon? What about the sins of Manasseh? What about the kings before them? What about Israel North? They're gone. Judah, because Israel's gone, don't you think that you're going to be ravishing in the sins? I would have to apologize to, to Israel if I don't go after you. If God does not charge England with the sins that they're involved in with today and the sins that America has done and, and is doing and multiplying words, God would have to apologize to Germany and Russia for the sins they've done to the Jews. And God's not about to apologize to them. And if you want a great Bible books to be taught in the public school system from grade one is you need to open up first second Samuel, first second Kings, first second. you got to see that hey as a nation you're falling into decay and when you fall in decay and you get worse in your sins god gets angrier god gets angrier god will send prophets and if you don't get right it's going to fall God right now is warning, before we get to the end of Second King, God is warning the nation Israel right now by this woman, if you don't get right, you're doomed. And we have such a righteous God, such a long-suffering God, that before he pronounces the judgment, he sends somebody along with the word. And you can apply this to today in the church age. He says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Why? Because they're going to hell. He's not going to send an angel like he did to Cornelius. And though that angel came to Cornelius, he says, go get Peter. And the fact is, Christians need to wake up, need to realize they may be that final warning. That that person may go into a life of destruction into hell. What if this woman acted like your normal Christian today? I, I can't say no. I'm going to upset the king. I, 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 I lose my position and all that. What, what, is she, what if, what if, Josiah, what if, when hearing the word of the Lord from the, from the high priest, what if, oh, that's a bunch of garbage. I'm not going to listen. What, what if he did that? What if the high priest, Haikai, never brought the book to the king? Let's look at chapter 22. Is look at the two options that people have. When that book was found, they could just put it back in the cubby hole, wherever it was. When, when, this, when it was given to the scribe, he could have said, you know what? I'm not reading this. I'll put it on my bookshelf. I'll keep, hey, look, it looks good on my, on my see, you, you see my bookshelf? What if he read the word and God said, Pfft. 
What if when it was read to the king, the king said, <clears throat> look at the reaction. The word of the Lord is found. It is read. It is read before the king. The king says, let's go get the Lord. Let's go find her. Let's find out what we can do. And then this woman comes up and she says, hey, all right, let's get right with God. And we haven't even ventured into the great thing of, of chapter 23 yet. Why? Because someone found the word of God and they read it and they did what God told them to do. And I've taught countless people, and you can ask my wife, and you can ask my daughter, I don't read the Old Testament. I don't read my Bible. I read this, but I don't read that. You're missing the whole picture. You're missing the whole picture. You need to read it all. Because they have forsaken me. That's what the church age is doing today. That's what America is doing today. And have burned incense unto other gods. That happens today. I remember when I was a little boy growing up as a Catholic, that, that when they come down the aisle and their little profession there, that stuff would gag me. That they might provoke me to anger. I'm stopping there for a minute. Perfect. Now listen, you're going to burn the incense because you know it makes your house smell better. You know you got mold and you got wet dogs and you know maybe children with diet. Okay, that's fine. Your house stinks and you need, okay, that's wonderful. But what about the people who buy it because new age? What if they buy it and they got their little fat butt, belly button God, and they're burning it to that fat guy? What if they're burning it to gods? Let's see what God says about that. Unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with the works of their hands. And there are shrines and houses all over the world today that they burn incense to their gods. And they think God is happy. What did the Bible just say? Oh, I don't read the Old Testament. How's that? What would happen if you were to take to your Catholic friend and say, let me show you this passage of scripture I just read tonight. Wouldn't that be interesting? Therefore, my wrath, God's wrath, God's wrath, God's angry. God does not like it. Though religion teaches you, oh, he's happy. I saw today, I, I was at the auto place for my car, at the TV, to, a commercial for the battery company. <laughs> You know, guys coming home angry. There are people fighting for a parking place. And little hearts are going over the sky. And it said, we all need God's love back again. No, that love is, is past tense upon Calvary. You need to preach the gospel. God is angry. Because of unholiness. And we cannot say that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. What do you do with this verse here when it says the work of their hands? How do you say that God, he likes the sinner? Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Now, you know that God destroys Judah, but we know the fact is the people are involved. It shall not be quenched. That's hell. That is hell pre. What fire is not quenched ever to be quenched? Hell. These people that are involved in this stuff, involved in the religions, involved in this false worship, go to hell. John the Baptist says in John 3 36 that if you don't have the Son, it is the wrath of God. Scripture is scripture, it's hell. But to the king of Judah, watch this which sent you in a choir of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, all right, there's wrath, there's trouble, the people are wrong, but this king, he wants to do right. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thy heart was, look at that heart, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. David 
The sin that was forgiven him because his heart was tender to God. It's not just say this prayer. It's not mouth. It's not head. Psychiatrists never work with the true identity of the Bible. It's the heart. Jesus said, out of the heart is the filthy language. It's all the sins of mankind. There's only one way to clean is, is get the Holy Spirit to move in. And thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord. That's exactly what his grandfather did, Manasseh, when he was taken captive into Babylon. He humbled his heart. But look, but look, it said that he walked right with the Lord. He neither went to the right way. He never went to the left way. He's walking on the straight way, and he still had to humble his heart for God to do right. Therefore, the, thy, humble thyself before the Lord. When thou heardest what I spank against, the, against this place, so the law of Moses, the law of Moses is what got inspiration of God. There it is. Men wrote the Bible. What, what did God just say? What Moses has wrote, I said it. How's that? And I will tell you, I've told people, that the pen itself is man and the ink is the Holy Spirit. Leviticus, probably where this is read, I, I didn't check the chapters, I apologize, or Deuteronomy. See, the Deuteronomy and Leviticus, I know that. What, we, what was read before the king, Moses wrote it. On the mount with, with God, 40 days and 40 nights. And God says, that is my words. That I spank against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse. Well, you ain't going to heaven with a curse. Well, yeah, probably. And I should have looked it up. I, I always forget. And has rent thy clothes. So see, God sees your reaction and wept. But we didn't read weeping. Look at that. It says that he wept his clothes. Uh, he wept his clothes. He rent his clothes. And now God says he's crying. Now, that we, I would assume he called these men. They are talking with this woman right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume. While these guys are away, he is just bawling. To God for answers. He has sent these men out to find out answers, and he's still praying to God right now. He has sent these people out, and he's not, okay, that's it. Let me go on with my life. He's still praying in tears. He's wept before me. I also have heard thee say of the Lord. <laughs> It'll be great if we have a God that listens to us. Go talk to a statue and see, see what kind of conversation you can have with one of them. Behold, therefore, I, God, will gather thee unto thy fathers. That would be Abraham's bosom, probably. And thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace. That would be definitely Abraham's bosom. Because the other man, the rich man, was in torment. And God says in Ezekiel, Jeremiah, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. There is, right there, look at it. There it is, write that down. That's Abraham's bosom, right there. Not mentioned as Abraham's bosom, but there it is. And thy eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. By the time we get to the end of the book of 2 Kings, Josiah is dead. So one aspect as far as Abraham's bosom that we see, and I don't know if you can take this into glory, but as far as Abraham's bosom, once they go there, they have no idea what's happening any longer. When they go into Abraham's bosom. And they brought the king word again, so they come back. And let's see. I have Deuteronomy 29 note here. Let's see if that's 29, 23. I did write it down. I forget everything. 29, 23. No, it's just a destruction. Yeah, chapter 28. Let's look at uh, this. is a possibility. Deuteronomy 28. 
Let's see, that's the good, that's the good. Verse 15. 14 verses of good. Let's look at the start in verse 15, the negative. But it shall come to pass, Deuteronomy 28, 15. Thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses uh -oh, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall be, oh, I get, look, there it is, I guess. Curse shall be thou in the, in the city. Curse shall be thou in the field. Curse shall be in the basket in thy store. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy land, the increase of kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Curse shall be when thou comest in. Curse shall be when thou goest out. And the Lord shall send upon thee cursings, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thy hand to do, until thou be. Imagine if this is what Josiah got read to him. And unto the, and unto, and unto thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. And the Lord shall make his presence cleave unto his pestilence cleave unto thee. Until he has consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess that matches, and the Lord shall smite thee with consumption and with fever, that's the first time that shows up, with inflammation and with extreme, that's the only pl place that word shows up, burning. That's a heat rash that doesn't go away very, very, very sore. And with sword, with blasting, that's the first time that word shows up with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And the heaven over thy head shall be brass, no rain, and the earth that is under the feet shall be iron, no plants. And the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder. America had that. That was called the, the great dust bowl. And dust from heaven shall come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. And it just goes on and on and on and on. This chapter just goes on. The wages of sin is death. And if you don't do what God tells you to do, after death comes hell. That's simple. 